Hey everybody, my name is Dale Sarslit, and today we're doing a reaction video. So, this is, well, it's fucking MatPat doing usually MatPat shit. Anyways, let's get into it. What remains okay, this is a video called Minecraft's Buried History. People once driven by oh shit, now scroll left up. Ruin. Erosion and hubris casting a shadow over what, what once was. Crumbling buildings and scattered fragments of society leaving a puzzle. Why are we being so dramatic? That someday someone will pick up those Please, come on, man. To reassemble the story of their downfall. Well, that day is today, and that someone is, is me. Hello, Never change, Matt Pat. Never change. The show that's always happy to brush up on some Minecraft. You know, I get super excited every time Mojang drops us a new update. New updates mean new mobs, new locations, new mechanics for us to mine through for story. And that mm -hmm, was definitely mm -hmm. so for 1.20 because they were finally adding something that had been teased all the way back in 2020. Archaeology. Archaeology is literally uncovering history. It is putting yes. together the lore of real life. So I waited for three years in anticipation. Mm -hmm, finally, mm -hmm. finally, when the Trails and Tales update came out, we got a camel. There was also a sniffer, a new cherry grove biome, and then a handful of armor designs and broken pots. Not exactly the most mm -hmm. groundbreaking stuff, at least at first glance. Sure, there was no big Come on now. like the warden or a mysterious structure like an ancient city, but as with most archaeology, while the surface might seem largely pointless and empty, if you dig a bit deeper, you start to uncover the real story behind everything. Matt Pat, yeah, please get to the point. gives us the most comprehensive look into the society of ancient builders that we've been theorizing about for years, their daily lives, their tribal disputes, and ultimately where it all went wrong with the origins of the Wither. Grab your archaeological brushes there, loyal theorists. I wonder how many times he had to backtrack on some Minecraft's forgotten civilization. And I do mean that literally, because this whole thing starts with one of the seemingly smallest new additions to the game that's ever happened, the pieces of pottery, otherwise known as mm -hmm. pottery sherds. These sherds are scattered throughout the Minecraft world at five archaeological sites. The desert are they actually called sherds? Wells, both the warm and cold ocean ruins and the newly added trail ruins. There are 20 unique designs for these shirts, and when combined together, you can actually create a pop. That for reference, I haven't paid attention to Minecraft in over a year. Um, and just why I haven't really. Also, at the same time, uh, Mojang's been doing some weird stuff behind the scenes. I don't, I don't know if I really want to support a company like that. Anyways, let's keep going. ...to hold various items. And no, you haven't been mishearing me this entire time. I am indeed saying sherds and not shards. It turns mm -hmm. out that a sherd is actually the technical term for broken pottery found at an archaeological site. It is so ah, the more you know. ...specific, but hey, good on you, Mojang, for being historically accurate. It tells us that they had big plans for these small pieces of pottery. And let me tell you, mm. that these sherds, who they were... I see one of them in... You see, pottery plays a huge role in... One of those is like a warden. ...the lives and beliefs of ancient civilizations. Food, fabrics, people, yep, they're all going to decay over time, and fairly quickly, I might add. But pottery can last a lot longer, and so it's often one of the only remaining evidence points that historians can use to think about. I now wonder, okay, so I don't know about anyone else here, well, anyone who watches my video, but, like, share this video with someone you know who does pottery, um, and tell them exactly what I'm telling you right now. Yo, I need you to make as much pottery as possible. With whatever fandom or nonsensical fan like group you have in mind, and just paint them as if they're gods. I want people to be thinking we worship Fiona and Cake. I want people to be thinking we worship Mickey Mouse, even though people still are Disney kids and Disney adults. Um, and yeah, I think that'd be funny shit if we just mix a bunch of false information to pottery and leave it behind. About how these ancient cultures behaved and operated. Yes, I'm a historical <laughs> troll. Structures like the pyramids can tell us a lot about the kings and the religious customs, but pottery was an integral part of the daily lives of everyone. And while today we might think of ceramic pots as just vessels for carrying stuff around like liquids or plants, ancient mm -hmm. societies gave these much more important and prominent roles in their lives. The ancient Greeks used to decorate their vases with elaborate ornamentation, allowing them to depict different aspects of the day to day life, from work to parties to sports, even showing their rituals for religious events like funerals. One of the most famous examples hmm. of this is the Eritrea painter name base, which depicts images of a bride in wedding scenes, along with characters from mythology that represent marital bliss. From this one pot alone, archaeologists were able to learn so much about ancient Greek marital traditions. In short, fragments of pottery are often the best and only view that we get into the day-to-day -day lives of long-gone, ancient, forgotten peoples. So and he's bringing all this up so that we can see what's next. Are all decked out with various symbolic imagery. I think Mojang is trying to do exactly that. The other 
important thing to note about these shirts is that the 20 specific shirt designs can't all be found in the same place. Different sets are designated to different biomes. Wait, really? Ruins, which means that oh. we might have been right about an ancient builder race, they weren't a single monolithic people like we've been assuming. Instead, yeah, no. seeing drawn on these shirts isn't just telling us about the daily lives of the ancient builders, but of their specific societies and their clans. Each location had its okay, own okay, okay. its own culture, its own daily tasks. And when you stop and think about it, that actually makes a lot more sense. In the mm -hmm. real world, all of humanity started off with one common ancestor that left the African continent sometime between 60 and 90,000 years ago. Yes. Yeah. And then they became the rest of us. All across the globe, We're still just as stupid. To adapt to new environments. And as a result, they built amazing wonders of the world that were specific to the region where they lived, which meant that things like religion, defense, entertainment, they all took different forms depending on where they were in the world. And we see this influence in the differences of some of the great structures that we find across the Minecraft world. The ocean monuments, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. instance, were designed to look like ancient Mesopotamian ziggurats, buildings meant to connect the heavens to the earth, which is noticeably different from the jungle temples, which are more similar to the ancient Hindu and Buddhist temples found in the jungles throughout Cambodia, like the Bang Malaya and Ta Prom. It therefore makes a lot more sense to say that these were all created by different groups of people spread out over vast distances for their Let's see rather than which groups are you going to put together super also here's my new question okay so if there are all these different separate groups can i then later on put a tier list up of the minecraft civilization tier list you know because that'd be fun as fuck even the new addition of armor trim seems to point in this direction. Mm -hmm. These items allow players to add decorative enhancements to their armor, which alone doesn't seem like all that much. But when you once again Tribal consider painting. that spread all across the Minecraft world, including some in the nether and some in the end, you start to reflect what we're seeing in the real world. Different tribes with armor made of similar materials, but all with different designs that reflect their local culture. Now that we know <laughs> that there were indeed different tribes spread out across the Minecraft world, what were the differences between them? And what can they tell us about the ancient Minecraft. Hey, how you doing, local? We're doing game theory. It's on Minecraft, and this one is so far from what I can tell. Fuck BRB. <laughs> Immediately, me starts explaining shit, local. I gotta get the fuck out of here. You talk too much. Okay, let's play again. With what I believe to be the oldest tribe. Ironically, from the newest of the archaeological sites, the Trail Ruins. Found hmm. in forest biomes like the jungle and taiga, these things are almost completely buried, with only the tallest buildings peeking out of the surface to find. And that already is Mojang telling us something. It's telling us that these buildings are old. Like, really, really old. It takes a long time for sediment to completely bury something like an entire mm -hmm. village. For a real-world example, just look at the Moai, commonly known as the Easter Island Heads. They were created between the 15th and 16th centuries. And for a long time, people thought that's all they were. Giant, big-brained heads sticking out of the ground. Yeah, no. They're not. There are actually bodies under each of those heads, but over the centuries, sediment built up around the abandoned statues so only the heads were visible above the surface, just like we're seeing with the trail ruins. But it goes beyond just being okay. buried underground. Oh. The shirts and armor trims found specifically in the trail ruins show mm -hmm. a lifestyle that, in the real world, we would consider to be part of the birth of civilization. The Howl shirt, okay. for instance, shows a so Dog. An animal that was once considered to be a threat to early humans later domesticated during the late Mesolithic Aww. period. Used to help out with so what you're telling me is the dogs have been ours for so long. The sheep shirt depicts a bundle of wheat. Wheat is the most common crop in Minecraft, but it's also one of the first plants that we as humans ever domesticated. Again, during that same Mesolithic mm -hmm, period. Mm -hmm. But the thing that really proves that this is coming from the oldest group by far is something that we've seen not only in the real world, but also in the lore of Minecraft itself. In the trail ruins, you can find yourself a variety of different armor trims. But okay. one of them in particular caught my eye. The host armor trim. Now, what? the hosts were the godlike beings found in Minecraft Legends. Oh! Ultimately summoned our character in to help save the day. At the end of the game, so at least something is true. The overworld, the hosts, they just did. They peace out. They're like, we're good here. So we theorized that the ancient civilizations did all they could to bring them back. This host armor trim being here seems to suggest that we were on the right track. And history also backs this up. Religious practices and rituals are found in our own history dating as far back as the Middle Paleolithic era, which falls between 45 and 200,000 years ago. This was indeed the first tribe after the events of Minecraft. Craft legends, a tribe mm -hmm. of people that were trying to call upon the old gods for help, a tribe of people who, while they were 
waiting, decided to set up some basic farming, hide in dense wooded areas, and domesticate animals, giving rise to the first ever civilization like we've talked about in a previous episode. But as time goes on, and the hosts of old don't immediately return, the ancient builders continue to develop. They continue to spread out to other biomes in order to gather resources. So I've watched a lot of the other like Minecraft game theory videos, right? And I remembered the um, parts about him, his wither theories. I remembered his ender theory. I remembered the um, theory about the fucking warden. I forgot about the host part. <laughs> earliest Minecraft theories, we talked a lot about the underwater temples. Another one of the mega structures, but this one found under Oh yeah, because Prism Marine is what they used for the temple and the other one. These submerged pyramids were either fishermen or perhaps pirates by trade. And now, thanks to the Sherds, we know that both of these ideas were right, just a little bit more nuanced than we expected. One of these Sherds is the Angler Sherd. Angler, as in a person who catches fish, a fisherman. And as this Sherd is only found in the warm ocean ruins, it likely means that, just like the trail ruins relied on basic agriculture, this group relied on fishing for survival in their trade. But mm -hmm. once you head on over to the cold ocean ruins, you get yourself a very different civilization. We find shared fragments like Blade, Explorer, Plenty, Vikings, don't you think? In fact, the shipwrecks, which have been a part of the game since 1.13's aquatic update, are chock full of plundered booty. So it seemed like the cold ocean ruin civilization were largely a society of pirates who used these ships to terrorize other civilizations, stealing their resources and their treasures in the I mean, if you're coming out the fucking cold Cold. Kind of makes sense. Sites located in the desert, and this is where we see things taking a dark turn. Uh, this is where we see the fall of these once great civilizations. The desert temples have always been a place packed with mystery for us theorists, but now we're getting some idea of what these people were doing when they weren't sourcing hundreds of TNT blocks for their death traps. With oh yeah. Like the miner and prize, it tells us that these were the people who built the mine shafts that you find throughout the overworld. These were the ones that truly pioneered the idea of mining the earth for resources. Resources, especially in places like the Badlands or the Red Sand Deserts. Then they bring all of these resources back to their base, mm -hmm. these giant temples, and then they booby trap them so no one would actually steal them. Sounds like most Minecraft players in a public server. Except, I don't think that mm -hmm. these treasures were strictly from the mine shafts alone. I suspect that the desert people were the first civilization to cross over into the nether. Now, the Ooh. Like a stretch just from me talking about a bunch of pottery, but hear me out. The okay, other okay. desert archaeological site is the Desert Wells. And mm -hmm. The Shira biome, it's not unreasonable to believe that these were the same group of people. In this okay, I can see that being the fair. Depicting a potion, Brew. but remind me, how do you make potions again? You need blaze powder. And the only way to get blaze powder is to grind down blaze rods from blaze, which are only found in, you guessed it, the nether. There's also okay, found in the uh, that just sounds pretty nice. Skull, depicting the head of a skeleton, or you could suggest a wither skeleton. Mm, small, that one seems a little bit of a stretch. Hard to tell, but we also know that red nope, I, I call that one to be a, a bit of a stretch. Also, there's a bunch of like heads and like shit on the um original fucking desert temple, right? Like, there's a little head for the creeper. I wouldn't be surprised if they had a skeleton head up there, because you know you can have a skeleton either inside of a body or just literal skeletons with bow and arrows. I feel I feel that one's a stretch. Now the brewing thing is actually really neat, because if it only appears there, it actually makes a lot of sense. It's like hold up. You can't get potions well, you know, that. Now, if it was just called bottle, it could be a water bottle, but it says potion. So, well... I mean, it kind of, it kind of makes sense. Like you can find in the mine shafts that we just talked about can be chiseled. And once you chisel it, what image appears on the block? The wither itself. Oh, it shit. The final shirt from the desert well, the arms up shirt. It's a very vague image. Just a humanoid figure with its arms up. Is it celebrating? Is it stretching? Is it waiting for some high fives? Or is it a stance of worship? Many religions mm. have you raising your arms up to worship the god of that faith. And I suspect that's exactly what we're seeing here. But I also don't think they're worshiping the hosts like the other factions of ancient builders. Instead, they're worshipping the Wither, a man-made creation. These people we made the god in, in our image. The remains of creepers. That they he hates man as much as we do. To find the perfect fuel to build their super-powered potions. They were tired of waiting for the hosts to save them. Tired of watching the creepers, zombies, and skeletons turn from ally to enemy after the events of Minecraft Legends. And mm -hmm. so they turned to science. They continued to explore the nether and saw the life-giving properties of soul sand. Vegetation giving life with no water or sunlight. Those they lost to piglins raised to life again in the form of wither skeletons. This was exactly what they needed. They brought I always thought that the wither skeletons were 
the um dead Enderman because of there's height and everything. That was just my thought. I thought the regular skeletons came out of us, and then the three block tall skeletons were the Ender Endermen. But you know, maybe, maybe I could be wrong. Probably am, but eh. Back to soul powered sand and experiment, designing the ultimate creature to be their new god. One that could protect them like the hosts couldn't or wouldn't, but just like everything else they knew, it too would turn on them. The damage caused by the withers felt across the land, countless lives lost to its unending rage. But few people are able to survive flee to the only place they believe the wither won't find them underground. Those that fled to the deep dark corners of the Minecraft Earth, meanwhile, created mm -hmm. ancient cities, a grand complex that would serve as their new home, at least for a little while. They would try to make a different kind of portal to take them to a new world. They would experiment again with soul sand, combining it with the science of redstone. But they did all of this with heavy hearts, knowing that they had doomed their once great world. And when the time came to open the portal, it didn't offer them a new chance, only more pain. Out of the portal came the warden, a creature built of souls, summoned by their regret and their loss. Which is why his pottery shirt, the last in the game, is uh -huh. known as the mourner. A lost oh. world representing the fall of a once great people whose story only remains in broken pieces of pots all but lost to the little Real sand, sand of time but hey that's just a theory <laughs> god who the hell is that theory thanks for watching if you're enjoying this breakdown of minecraft's forgotten history anyways we're liking this video i'm going to tell you right now how the hell did you watch this video if you haven't gone into the description and watched the original if you would like to correct your mistake go down there if you never made the mistake congratulations you got here on purpose um Anyways, bye everybody. I'm going to be getting the fuck out of here and doing something else. But here's the part where I decide to plug myself. If you would like, well, you can like. If you would like to say something, comment. If you want to just come back around and support me or you think I'm not, or you think that I am worthy of your subscription, subscribe. Please, have a lovely fucking day. And, um, goodbye.